and welcome to another Pitch Football Championship preview. Today, we are focusing on the infamous, the notorious, the family-friendly Millwall Football Club. And we've got with us the Millwall podcast host, Mickey. Mickey, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, fella. Not too bad at all. And also from that Millwall podcast, we've got Kai. Kai, how are you doing, pal? I'm all good, mate. All good. Looking forward to this. Good, good. Let, let's just briefly talk about end of last season. Because in typical Millwall fashion in the Championship, so close, but it just quite didn't happen. You leave it so late every season to make that final push. One day you're going to do it and you're going to get it in playoffs and you're going to upset everybody and go into Premier League. But what is it with that final running? Where does this confidence come from towards end of the season? I think it's just, I think they just realised that, you know, we've got, a, we've got a train line straight to Wembley and uh, and it's, you know, it's easy for us to get there and and I think they just decide that now's the time to push. We, we're just, you know, we've got nothing to lose now. We're, we're in a safe position. We're not going to go into relegation. So we've got a safe position. Let's just start playing. Um, and that's, you know, where it starts happening. So for yourself, Kai, what is it with Millwall? Are they ever going to break this curse of just missing out towards the end of the season and get into that championship playoff? Or is it going to be the same this season as well? I hope they're going to break it at some point. Um, I mean, I think I think this year it was a bit different. It was like Gary Rowell sort of challenged them. About, I think it was about 17 games to go. We'd lost 3-0 away at Fulham. Um, we, weren't, we weren't hugely outclassed that day. Um, but obviously the, the scoreline the score shed that it was sort of thing. And um, But, you know, so after that, we just, we were a different side. Um, we looked very, very good. I think we won, we won five games in a row after, after that match. Um, and yeah, from then on, we were just diff- a different, different, uh, different side. And I don't know, I think it's the pressure being off a little bit in the way that yeah. when, they, when there's no, when we can't get relegated, the, the team seems to think, well, we're safe now. Let's, let's almost go for it. Let's sort of attack. Let's give it a go. And it's just a shame they can't start that a little bit earlier. They do. I think, very close. I, 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 I agree with what you're saying, Kai. There, I mean, we we spoke about it on the show plenty of times. I think it's just Gary had a look. Gary just wasn't focusing where we were, wasn't focusing on our position. We had a, an awful lot of draws. What I think kept us um, in the position where we needed to be. And as Kai said, you know, there was an interview where he said, you know, we've got 17 games left. Each one of them is our cup final, and we're going to approach it like that. No one, no one's talking to the playoffs. We're just looking at each game as we as we go and we're just going to go and and I think that's probably the best way to man, maintain it because then you haven't got that pressure going in as we saw as we went into the end a few teams sort of lost their bottle in the playoffs and, and coming up towards the playoffs and I think that was it there was no pressure on Millwall to finish in the playoff because Gary wanted us to finish what seven eighth I think it was or ninth I, I, you know he he'd set a place where he wanted us to get to and I think we were there within that that premise and he just went each one's a cup final lads let's go for it and you just saw a different mentality the players seemed to you know take that on board the pressure just dropped and and yeah it was, it was good Looking at Millwall there's always, it's always been important for the club to do well for there to be that connection between the managers the players the fans the board to a level but it seems to be more a, a ground level thing where if that connection is there Millwall does well if I was asking yeah. Akai, what, what's that? What's the connect like at the minute between, let's say, the management team and, and the fans? Is everybody on the same page, or is there any worries here? Um, I think had you had asked me probably t- maybe you know January time, I think Gary, you know, seems to be under a bit of pressure uh, from the fans. We weren't exactly clicking. Football was um, not so exciting as we as the fans would have hoped. I hope to see, um, but we were still plugging away, getting a few results. We, we struggled a little bit. I think it was December we struggled a little bit. And at one point, we were still like, we, we were in a bit of danger. Um, but then that, you know, Freno loss happened to go away at Fulham. And from then on, the fans have been, you know, I think the, the fans have turned back in favour in terms of in, in get, with Gary, especially the five games winning streak. They were very, very, very happy. The, 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 the day that it sort of turned a little bit was Blackpool away. I think it was January. Uh, we lost. Well, I think it was one nil. I think it was a it was an own goal, I believe. And that day, I think it was a bit bit of a turning point where you almost felt like Gary was under a bit of pressure here, and he needed to return it around. Eventually, he did, and I think the fans are quite pleased now. But obviously, we now need to back. He needs to back that up in the transfer window. We haven't really seen much activity yet, but it's all about how he how he reinforces now, especially with the potential of, of Jeb Wallace leaving. Speaking of that, we'll move into that. Obviously. For yourself, Mickey, if Jed Wallace were to leave, how big of a blow would that be? 
That would be huge. You know, we, we could sit there and say, look, it, it is what it is. I mean, we've been having a debate on the show recently um, over the last what, two months or so where, you know, we don't actually rate or we don't actually think Jed Wallace is really a legend as such yet, but he is an outstanding player. We think he probably needs a little bit more time to get to where we need to, to, to become a legend. But at the moment, we don't think so. Yes, he will be missed because he's an outstanding player. But there are other players out there who probably will be just as good as him. The problem you've got is that you've got to find them and find them at a reasonable price. You know, we're not going to be, we're not a club, we've never been a club that's going to go out and spend eight, £10 million on a, you know, on a, a fully functioning, hit the ground running player. We're more likely to hit someone from, you know, the likes of lower league, you know, a Swindon or, a, you know, a Cambridge or, or, or find, find a rough diamond lower league and then all of a sudden they turn it on. I mean, you know, a bit like Lee Gregory, Morrison, etc. We get them from lower leagues and then they suddenly come on fire. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we signed Lee Gregory, what, seven years ago today as well. So, you know, that's what we could do with a player like that to replace him um, or even a, a replacement fairly cheap who's, who's proven, but I can't see that. For yourself, Kate, it, it does look likely he could leave. Um are you confident that there will be something that could convince him to stay? Or do you think it's dead on he's going to go? And if he were to go, what would you say is a reasonable amount of money? Well, it won't be money. It'll be free, which is brilliant. That's that's the disappointing thing. Um, oh, is he out of contract this season? Yeah, he's out of yeah. contract. So we won't even get anything for him. So that's, so that's a real blow, in my opinion. But... Um, I think I don't I don't really know what could convince him. I think we've we've offered him plenty of contract offers and unfortunately he just hasn't hasn't uh, agreed one yet. But you never know, there's still potential that he could stay, you never but it's not done until it's done. So hopefully, you know, something will change his mind or something will, you know, keep him here. But I think his his overall goal at a lot of people have a lot of we've seen a lot of interviews with him saying he's not in, interested in the money, he's interested in in playing in the premiership. But there's you know, he's been linked with West Brom, uh Bushkitas. West Brom, for me, okay, you're, you've got probably got, if you look at the, the club, the project, um, obviously they are a bigger club than Millwall in terms of the you know the money and stuff. But I don't know. I don't feel like they would. They, last year, they were, they, were, well, they, they finished below us. So that's that's frustration for me. Um, but we'll have to see with that one. That's, that's a difficulty. But, yeah, you know, Jed, Jed goes a massive blow. Yeah, I mean, if, if you were to look at the players you could replace him with, Who's actually out there that you'd fancy coming into Millwall to kind of sort that position? Who would you perform with? Oh, I'd leave this to my football guru, mate. He's our football guru <laughs> on the podcast, mate. So he he is the um he is the football knowledge, mate. So he he will reel off names now of players who who we will we will use. Who, who are we going to have, Kai? <laughs> well, first, obvious. This is the obvious choice, but I'd love to see us go for someone like a Tom Lawrence. Uh, from Derby, obviously they'll be it'll be very cheap right now with the with the, with the uh, state they're in, um, especially with that deal falling through that they were going to you know potentially have that new owner. Um, they're in a bit of bit of tri- they're, well big big trouble now. So I think especially, Lawrence, especially with the takeover collapsing as well. Yeah, so I, I think that's one that we could maybe utilize. And, and obviously Gary did work with I think he worked with Tom Lawrence at Derby, so he's a player that he knew probably know. Um, I think he'd be one that the fans would be very happy with. The other one, I'd love to see Harry McCurdy come in uh, from Swindon. Um, fast, good, good with the ball, uh, quick. And then you could even look at, you know, players from our from our own division. But I think Mickey's right. We've got to look lower down almost. Or the sort of, there's, there's players where maybe we do bring players in who above, you know, team, teams above or, you know, teams, you know, in the same, same sort of league as us, like, you know, play like Mason Bennett. But then players are always struggling a little bit for form and we have to almost, we, Mason Bennett at his best, Millwall can't, Millwall couldn't afford him. If he was, if he was where he could have been, Millwall would never afford Mason, could never afford Mason Bennett. But Mason Bennett was struggling. We brought him in and now he's, you know, he's really starting to to show us what he can do when he's when he when he's injury free. So I think they're the sort of players you'd have to go after. Either someone that's struggling for maybe and you want to sort of turn him, get him back to where he was. Um, or someone lower down like a McCurdy, someone that that sort of stature. Would either of you take Ollie Burke back, please? Absolutely. You would? You think Absolutely. you would? How did you find him, Mickey, even with his uh, fashion posts on Instagram? His fashion post. Oh, mate, I, I love his fashion post. I think his fashion post on Instagram is fucking class. So, yeah, if, you, you, if you've if you not watched it then uh, or not seen him on Instagram, definitely check him out because, um, yeah, more money than sense. Um, and, you know, 
some of the designer stuff he wears um, is questionable. Um, very, very questionable. Um, and, and, and he's punching as well. With all those clothes, he's definitely punching as well. So, um, you know, fair play to the fella. But no, he's a big lad, though, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's got some pace on him. If we can have him injuries free and we can actually see what he can do, then yeah, I'd probably have him back to be fair because he was he, he was showing signs on some games of being quite a good player for us. But we just need to to get embedded in with a, a couple of other players and start forming um you know a, a, a tight front line and a tight front group um to be able to score goals. Because our weak our weakness is that we're just not scoring enough goals. We we you know a few games we scored um, a couple of goals and stuff from people you didn't expect, you know, Murray Wallace scoring two, etc. But we need the front team to start scoring the goals. Um, you know, we need a, a 20 a, a twenty plus goal scorer every season. Um, and we've been missing one of them for probably three or four years, to be honest. You were quite clinical at times, though, because I remember you did the double over my team, Chef United, last season. I think you had, what, three shots combined all games, but you scored all three. So there is that in the Millwall team. There is. Bit. You need more creativity, do you think? Yeah, I mean, like a phobie. I mean, a phobie can have, you know, he, he can be a nightmare in front of an open goal. Yet another goal, as long as the cross is in right, he's on the end of that and burying it. He's got that ability that, you know, you put the ball in in the right place, he'll bury it. But in other games, if he's the one trying to run in with the ball to score, it's shooting it wide or shooting it over. He, he, he's very inconsistent. What we need is a consistent front line. What you know, finishes every time. Um, but hey ho, that's you know, it's probably a pipe dream. But you know, I reckon Messi could play for us and still wouldn't score. <laughs> yeah, probably. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing, is, yeah, that's the that's the thing, is it? But like, I mean, against Sheffield United, we have to take that little bit of a you know pinch of salt because obviously it was Cooper pretty much every time, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're bogey, isn't he? That player, mate. Yeah. He just he got, loves scoring against you boys. Got three bogey players. Cooper, Snodgrass, and I forget other one's name because we're not to play in League One anymore, thank God. But there, were, there was somebody down there that did it every season as well. Before I let you both go, I'm going to ask you two rapid-fire questions. Uh, I'll go to Kai first. What game are you looking forward to most this season? Oh, that's difficult. Um, well, we haven't really got many London games this year because of obviously QPR and the only one, I think. Um, but if I had to go for my favourite game this year... It's not there isn't much in there in terms of like rivalries. So obviously Leeds didn't quite come down, which been been nice if they would have come down. It's a um, shame they didn't come down. I were hoping that happened. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is no, it is a shame. It is a shame. Um, I'm gonna go. This is gonna be this is well, I'm just gonna go for QPR. I think that London Derby, I think at the Den, it always you know attracts a few and it's a it's always a good, good game. So yeah, I'll probably go for them. Probably that's quite boring, but that's about our the championship this year. So Mickey, how about yourself? Are you looking forward to playing? I would I would go um, Millwall West Ham FA Cup fourth round um, <laughs> would be would be an absolute absolute dream. Um, but no, it'd probably be it'll be good to probably Burnley would be quite a good mm. game because they're they're a Premiership team and they're probably not used to coming to a, a, you know a working man stadium. And, and Millwall is you know very close. It's very intimidating. Um, and most Premiership clubs don't like it. So yeah. I'd probably say it'd be interesting to see Burnley come um, and they're in a bit of trouble and, and see, you know, how we get on with them. So, yeah, I'd probably say Burnley only because it's a newish team in, into our league as such. Um, yeah, Norwich, Norwich has been there before. Watford is... Norwich and Watford, they're up, down, up, down. A bit like Fulham, aren't they? Yeah, 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 pretty much. So, yeah, Watford's a no... You know, is a is a is what it is club, and and Norwich is is what it is, isn't it really? But I think Burnley will be the ones that are coming down. Burnley will be the ones where it'll be interesting to see um, how far the Premiership has destroyed Burnley as a as a working man's club. So I'll stick with you, Mickey. Eh? Straight, off, straight off the bat, club as it stands now, nobody's left, nobody's come in. Where are Millwall finishing in the league? Bottom off. Definitely, probably between eighteen and twenty. Yeah, you know, is Jed staying or go? What Jed now here or, or gone? The, the team you have now, so presume he's still yeah, there. No, we're yeah, yeah, we're yeah, bottom half of the table, I'd say. Back for yourself, guy. 
Um, have we got the loanees? Because they don't run out until the 30th. Have we got the loanees or are they back to their clubs? They're back to their clubs. So. <laughs> have we even got a squad to compete right now? Um, yeah, yeah, we could play some <laughs> under-23s, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'll probably have to go maybe 16th right now. I'll probably probably 16th with the current squad we have. If you were to get two or three players in, a striker, maybe somebody to replace Wallace, even if he's not up to the same standard, um, where else would you say you need to strengthen? How, how long is this show? <laughs> yeah, um, I would say we probably need we probably need attacking midfield. We need a couple of strikers. Um, I'd probably say we could do with another right back. Um, I'd probably say probably a left back as well. And yeah, I'd probably say there's, there's probably what f- maybe four six places we could fill. Kai, yeah, I think that's about right. I'd say right back, left back. Probably a centre back if we don't get Ballard back. Um, probably even another centre midfielder now. Keith's gone, but a more attacking one. Maybe even two. Maybe two midfielders, one holding, one attacking, and then I'd say a couple of wingers and a couple of strikers. Do you reckon, Quite a lot to do. Do you reckon yeah, it's be like a, a, a mix of loan players and maybe some lads coming through academy to fill bench seats? Yeah, I hope not loan too much because otherwise we just have to keep replacing them every year, don't we? Yeah. But that's nice way around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ollie Bell would be nice. So take, take him. him take yeah. him. I'll I'll drive him down there to you. <laughs> do you boys? Do you boys not like him out there? Then is, there, not, is there an issue? When he first came into the club, we thought we did something special. We, obviously, with pace. Uh, apart from his goal at Man U, I don't. With I think he had a combined twelve shots, and I think he got one on target, and he scored it. His pace, brilliant. Football for a big brain, lad. Yeah. Oh, for, his pace is phenomenal. But if, if you could put a decent pair of shooting boots on him, it'd be too good for either our teams. He'd play in top half Premier League. If he didn't have bananas for feet, he'd be playing for Barcelona or somebody like that with pierces got it's scary. It's all it's all those Gucci Crocs he wears, mate. They don't I'm do his feet any favours, mate. That's, do you know what I mean? And they are, I did not know until I saw his Instagram that Gucci makes a pair of Crocs. Mad, I'm, still, I'm still stunned about the fact that I think they come off Thorsby Market and he's just tarred them up for his Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> we looked the other day and he was an outfit he was wearing was best part of nearly four grand and you're thinking oh. mate really and then he posted a different one the night later and you're thinking mate really you've got more money than sense same uh, with Ollie McBurney for us he once went on Instagram he had a post he had a Stone Island bucket hat Stone Island shirt Stone Island coat Stone Island like weird parachute trouser things and a Stone Island backpack and you just think yeah I've heard to get the badge in mate but this is taking it a little bit too far so Another one of them. Yeah, Ollie McBurney, do you want him? We'll give him. Listen, we'll take whoever you, you know, whoever, <laughs> whoever's half decent can do a job, we'll take them. But again, it's not, you know, we've now got a director of football who's come back, who, who started his life as a football journalist, then went to Stoke, done a bit with us, then went to Stoke and come back. And and to be fair, that, that sort of underrates the lad. The lad is a good football brain. He, he you know, he's, he's a good football knowledge of a lad is you know for it but he's got full responsibility now for getting players in we've now started looking overseas over the last year and a bit where we never used to look outside of of the league as such without the UK so fingers crossed we find a couple of up and coming maybe Turkish or you know lads from Finland or you know somewhere like that who are at Norway underrated and suddenly perform and, and go we need to look at Getting hold of players cheap, develop them up, and then sell them for a profit, and then move on and find some more. That's where we need to be. But hey ho, it's Millwall. We uh, we do the same shit every year, lads. I think that's where I'll leave it. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been brilliant chatting no, no, no. with you. For anybody who's not seen it already, head over to that Millwall podcast. Obviously, if you're a Millwall fan, it'd be right up your street. And if you're not, just go for a laugh anyway. I think that's how we're going to work with a lot on these podcasts. <laughs> Guy, Mickey, it's been brilliant. Thank you. No, no, definitely.